I am gray, still on the page, oh, color me in. Just an outline, sketchy but fine, oh, color me in. If green is chasing the hills of the miles, if blue is pursuing the skies, See that the red of your heart doesn't mind Where to begin to color me in I'll always wait, it's never too late To color me in To color me in Today or next year, I'll always be here if you want to color me in For most of us, removing our unwanted body hair is simply a part of our cosmetic experience, whether it is under the arms or the bikini line or the eyebrows. But some of us do more serious battle with unwanted hair on the upper lip, the chin, the back, the chest. Sometimes unwanted body hair is more than just a cosmetic problem. Take Margaret Thatcher. She once announced that she wouldn't tolerate any minister of hers wearing a beard. Well, prominence, virility, and wisdom are just some of the powers that a beard can lend its wearer. It's like nature's balaclava. A good one and you are almost unrecognizable. Yeah. A great one, you can get away with anything. <laughs> but let's not forget, underneath every beard, there is a clean shaven stranger just waiting to be met. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a young boy, the youngest of his family. He was exceptionally pretty. His skin was like porcelain, and his hair fell in golden curls from the crown of his head. He was a sight to behold. Now, no one expected him to work because beautiful people never have to. And no one expected him to think because thinking gives you wrinkles. <laughs> no, all he wanted to be was a prince, to do great deeds, and to win the hearts of every single person who ever laid eyes on him. Thank you very much. <laughs> One day a carriage drawn by four White horses drew up beside the boy as he walked down the lane. Inside the coach there was a king from a distant land with a neat grey beard, a penchant for beauty, a pretty big fortune, and no heirs. <laughs> he was so beguiled the boy's good looks, he offered to adopt him now in spot and whisk him away to a new life as a prince. Well, the boy agreed, they both shook hands, he got inside, and away they went. was exactly what the young boy dreamed it would be. He won the hearts of the kingdom with a single flutter of his eyelashes. Life was sweet. And it would remain that way had it not been for one particular morning he noticed a mark on his chin. It's probably just a stubborn bit of dirt, he thought. So he gave his face a wash and a scrub. A scour and a rub. But the mark was still there because it was, in fact, a little brown hair.
well. <laughs> After a lot of tears, the king finally managed to calm the boy down long enough to show him how to shave. The feel of cool steel on an adolescent cheek. The boy went to bed with a sigh of relief. But the next morning, little brown hair was back, along with a few more tears. Honestly, said the king, what is the matter with you? A beard is normal. I have a beard and you don't see me crying about it. Even the queen has a moustache. <laughs> and look how well she copes. But, for all the king's consoling, the little brown hair kept coming back. Each time, bringing with it more and more courtiers that spread along his jaw. Then, he noticed a darkening fuzz on his arms and legs. Upper lip, back, chest. His body was becoming a jungle. There was only one thing for it. Total deforestation. <laughs> Each morning, the prince spent hours in the royal chamber with a retinue of pages. Each one was armed with a brush, a bowl of foam, a bowl of water, and a razor. They lathered and scraped his skin, beginning with the big toe, creeping upwards so the foam lifted like a cloud to reveal an immaculate body underneath. Then they set about examining him with eyeglasses like jewelers rooting out the floors in a precious stone. Each paw was infantry. Every morning passed its way. <laughs>